Well, it is a new year. Never thought we would get here. Uh, ultimately, it, it's, it's another day, but symbolically, it's the start of a new cycle uh, by our calendar. And uh, everybody's so thrilled to see 2020 going away. There were good things in 2020, but overall, it's been a very, very difficult year for so many people. And um, I, think, uh, I think everybody's really ready for some kind of a fresh start. As long as that fresh start doesn't make people suddenly think everything's healed and we're back to normal again, because we're far from that. And this is going to be a very difficult year for us, I think. I think we saw what lay ahead during 2020. And now we really need to address the issues that, that we are really confronted with, both with the, uh, the pandemic, um, with all of the uh, racial strife that, that, that reared its head last year and uh, really needs to be addressed and dealt with. Um, there are so many issues but I feel that we're heading in the right direction, and, I'm, and I try to be as optimistic about all of this as I possibly can be, uh, because without optimism, you really are in a dark place, in a dark hole, and, you, and it's very hard to get out of it. So, um, so I hope everybody was safe. I saw a lot of stuff on the news of these big rave parties and stuff going on where people were packed like sardines illegally and not wearing masks and stuff. So once again, like with the holidays, you know, it's just a matter of waiting a couple of weeks and seeing what, what happens to the numbers. But um, I really want to uh, encourage people just to be, let's get this behind us. Um, there's so much potential in our futures, uh, but until we can address this issue, um, we are really, uh, we are not going to be moving forward. Or we'll be doing it in incremental steps rather than really empowering into it. So um, so I just want to say Happy New Year to everybody. I did uh, watch some TV last night, uh, got some food together, and we sat on the couch and watched TV and the dogs were crashed and um, heard some fireworks going off at midnight uh, in the area. People just can't help themselves. I just hope nobody got hurt because there's no emergency rooms left. They're all packed where we live. They, every, every bed is full. So if you suddenly were out there doing something stupid with an M80 and lost a finger or something, that's gone. I don't think you're going to get it back. Um, but it's, it's just very surreal to be in, in Pasadena without the parade, without the football game, without... I'm so used to having at least a couple of blimps hovering above my head for the whole day um, and lots of planes dragging banners around and, and just people on the streets and so much activity. And it's like a ghost town. There's just nothing going on here. I mean, maybe down on Colorado Boulevard there's some people, but the police were going to keep people off the streets there because they didn't want them to gather since there wasn't a parade. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. So... Uh, but, you know, I, I ended the year thanking this, the participation in this network by everybody. And I'm, uh, I'm welcoming everybody back for the new year. I'm, I'm so thrilled to be doing this. It really has done so much for my emotional psyche during this, during this whole period. And I was totally shocked. Uh, there's a, a site, No Treble, and they came out with a report yesterday of the top, uh, I think it was either the 10 or the 20 videos of, of the year, and I came in one and four. Uh, it's just, this all blows my mind, because this is nothing that I've ever strived towards. I just, I love sharing, and I love just hanging with people, and uh, so to have it suddenly getting all this, this recognition is kind of, you know, I don't want it. I don't want to get wrapped up in that one. That's that's for sure. But I do. I totally love the the community that we've developed here. And today I thought I'd really go back uh, historically. 
And when we started with James Taylor, the original band was Danny Korchmar on guitar, Russ Kunkel on drums, myself on bass, and Carol King on piano, and James. And we encouraged uh, Carol to step out from behind you know, the, the side man, side gal position, and do some of her music because people, you know, they suddenly saw this young girl on stage. They hadn't really no idea who she was, but if you look through their record collections, they probably had a ton of Goffin and King records of that, that they, they had penned the music for, for all kinds of groups during that period, the Ronettes, the Shirelles. I mean, everybody was doing um, Goffin and King songs. And she was just a teenager when she was writing all these amazing songs with her husband, Jerry Goffin. So it got to the point where um, she, we encouraged her enough where she went and got together with Lou Adler at, at Ode Records and uh, went in and cut an album. Ends up cutting Tapestry. So <laughs> needless to say, all of a sudden we have a side person in the band that's got like one of the biggest records in the world. So she had to move on and pursue her career. So I was working on an album project at A&M Records. Um, for, there was a producer there um, and he's still around. Michael Jackson was his name, but not that Michael Jackson, uh, this Michael Jackson. We did a lot of projects, Paul Williams's records together, all kinds of stuff together. And he had called me to do this, this album project and um, when I uh, went over there, we were in Studio B, I think. I, th I think it was it's either B. Uh, you know, you, you always forget with these studios. It's like either one, two, three. I think it was Studio B. It's either numbers or letters for them. And um, it was uh, this young artist in there. It was uh, Tom Jans and Mimi Farina. Now, Mimi Farina is... Uh, was Joan Baez's younger sister. And I've made some notes here because I figured let's start the year out with some notes so I know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, so uh, the album that we did, we did it this in 1971, and it's called Take a Heart. And it was Craig Durge on keyboards, Jim Keltner and Russ Kunkel uh, sharing drumming seats, the, the incredible Sneaky Pete Kleinow on steel, now, Sneaky Pete was one of the most inventive steel players I've ever known. I mean, most, I mean, I worked with a lot of the Red Roads and all these great Buddy Emmons, all the great steel players. But Pete would come in and he'd like plug all kinds of stuff into his steel and make it do all the amazing things. And later I found out he was also a special effects artist. And I was told that, like when you, if you saw Terminator with Schwarzenegger, at one point, he's driving in his truck, and it blows up and burns up. And then this skeleton of him comes out, just because it's still pissed off. And, uh, and I think Pete designed that skeleton. And it was one of his special effects jobs. So an amazing cat. And um, uh, Edgar Lustgarden uh, played both cello and piano on this, on this project. And Emil Richards, the great, great Emil Richards, um, played percussion on it. Um, Henry Louis engineered the project. They did a lot of work with Henry. Henry, uh, I believe, engineered Joni Mitchell's Blue album. But he was, you know, these studios, they, these people really, everybody kind of worked in their places. And like uh, David Anderley was at A&M. And I did lots and lots of projects with David. And uh, you would get these teams together of engineers, producers, bands, and it was sort of a, a wrecking crew kind of an energy that was going on. Uh, the photography for the thing was interesting. It was uh, Jim Marshall took the pictures. Now, Jim Marshall's the photographer who took the, uh, the iconic picture of Johnny Cash <laughs> you know, giving the finger. Uh, that, that'll go down in history for sure. Um, but there's, a, there's some tragedy amongst all of this, too. Um, Mimi was married to Richard Farina, and they worked together uh, for many years. I think she was like 18 when they got married. She was really young, 17 or 18 years old. And they were based out of the Bay Area, up north. Um, but Richard, in 1966, on Mimi's 21st birthday, 
was killed in a motorcycle accident. Uh, it was truly tragic, and he was really a fine artist, songwriter, and that was a terrible loss. Um, and then um, in 1984, uh, Tom, he had moved to Nashville. I had done a solo album with him, too, later on here in Los Angeles, but he had moved to Nashville and was writing down there and, and connecting, and he was in a motorcycle accident. Um, he survived the accident, but I think it really led him down a, a really difficult path. And in 1984, he was just 36 years old, and he, he died, I think, of an overdose at that point, which is really heartbreaking. And um, Mimi, um, in 2001, when she was 56, died of neuro, uh, what was it, neuroendocrine cancer. And... Uh, she was such a delight, such a beautiful, beautiful girl, you know, and, and just, you know, had that same energy like her sister Joan Baez had. And, and Mimi had formed uh, this foundation, Bread and Roses. They went around to hospitals and jails and all kinds of institutions to bring music and life to people in very difficult situations. And that was a local Bay Area thing that eventually went nationally. Um, but that was... Uh, it, it's, it's, it was quite a legacy that, that she left behind, and I was, I was so broken hearted. I liked her so much, and when I heard she had passed, I was like, are you kidding me, Jesus? Hold Laptop just timed out here. Hold on. Let me re get in here, because I'm going to do a song from, from uh, that album. And the thing that was interesting on that album was, and it, it, it goes back to the start of this story, was Carol had to move on, Carol King, because of Tapestry. And when we did this album, um, that was the first time I ever played with Craig Durge. And uh, I immediately, after the session, we, we hung out and talked and stuff. And I got his information to Peter Asher. And, and Craig ended up replacing Carol uh, in James Taylor's band. And then out of that, the group The Section formed with Russ and Cooch and myself and Craig. Um, so he kind of completed the picture for us. And, uh, and Craig's still out here and he lives 10 minutes from me and uh, still making music and he's still a gifted writer, um, but one of the better keyboard players I've ever worked with. Um, he's really, really quite a special man. Um, so I, I'm going to try to see if I can remember this one. This is called Kings and Queens, and this is uh, Mimi Farina and Tom Jans from 1971. So I definitely uh, hitting the Wayback Machine. Um, on this one, I probably, I, Frankenstein wouldn't have existed yet. Um, so this was probably my old 62 jazz bass that, I carved into the peace love bass where I cut the horn off and did all that stuff and I've used it on other things and that's was the bass that I used on um, the early James Taylor stuff, the um, Billy Cobham Spectrum, that was the bass I played on that. Um, it's the bass I played on Dr. My Eyes and because uh, we built this bass around 1973-4 right in that period and, uh, and it's just been it's been my workhorse since then. So here we go. Let's see if I can get through this. Kings and Queens.
Jans. Um, so I'm going to wish everybody just an excellent start to the new year. Be safe, be smart. Um, there's a bunch of people that had no opportunity to celebrate with their family or friends last night, and that's all the caregivers that are working in the hospitals, the doctors, the nurses, the staff that are keeping the hospitals cleaned and, and disinfecting like there's no tomorrow. I mean, there's so many different jobs like this, but man, they are working like I've never seen people work before. It's the stress level is quite staggering that they're going through. Uh, man, my heart is with them. They are truly heroic people. So I am going to, uh, I've got to make a couple of phone calls. And uh, today I picked up all the stuff I needed from the post office. And today i going to begin filling all of the overseas book orders and get those off to the people. They've been waiting long enough for this. It's just as with the, the hassles at the post office and all this stuff, I just decided I had to hold off on this, just do this in one big fell swoop because I've got to put adhesive packets on all the boxes with three pages of, of customs paperwork and all of this. But it's interesting. I've got Books going from Rio to Tasmania to Finland to the Middle East. So it's, pretty, it's a trip. You know, it's a, really, an, really an adventure. So I'm going to be doing that through the weekend and finishing up some other projects. But I'll be back tomorrow, um, off and running here. And I just uh, really want to wish everybody the very best for this year. Let's, let's make this a positive year and we're going to go through rough times to get there but let's let's come out of this year f far better than we came into this year please so we can't deal with it much more of that so of you all you just take good care and i will see you tomorrow so <laughs> take care bye-bye